Hey friends, welcome back to the Carlos Board Games channel, Games channel, and we're going to be doing yet another Blood on the Clock Town video. This time we're going to be looking at creating custom scripts and how to make balanced custom scripts. Okay, so I've played a lot of Clock Tower over the years, and I've played a lot of advanced scripts over the years, where a lot of crazy characters showed up, came and went, and changed, and all this different stuff, and sometimes when putting a script together to try out these new things, people hit it out of the park, and it's really good, and sometimes it's really, really terrible. And so we're going to try and go through some stuff today, and look at what's good, what kind of stuff indicates a balance, and I don't know, see where we go from there. The, um, probably the easiest, the easiest way to go from playing base 3 to playing something advanced is to take one of the base 3 scripts um, and add, add stuff to it. So we're just going to import the entirety of Trouble Brewing here, just from the left panel. This is the script tool available on their website. I'll put the entire Trouble Brewing list in here. Right, and then... If we want to change things here, we can just make substitutions. One of the easy first ones to do is to get up to 4 demon. Get up to 4 demon, right? Um, so we go, okay, what sets do we want our demons from? Put the demon list. Now, what would fit here good with Trouble Brewing? Well, actually, Legion. Literally playing Trouble Brewing with just the addition of Legion is insane. That's actually really fun. Um, one of the scripts that I really like is, oh, I have to cut, uh, go to something virtual, is this. This is the script that I've run before, and I really like it. So, you replace one townsfolk, I like to replace the virgin, with the atheist, right? So, the storyteller can break the game rules, and if executed, good wins, even if you are dead. So, the storyteller runs the game in such a way that every player is a good character but you have to be as convincing as possible that there's evil characters in play uh, and this is really really fun um but difficult to pull off um and what's funny is the more crazy you are uh, as a storyteller the more people see that on the script and assume that you're going to do crazy things um and it has like it works really well with legion as well right um, and then so you can run just trouble brewing, and that's really funny because everyone has this insane doubt of is this an atheist game? Is this a legion game? You can run a legion game, and then everyone you know is paranoid is this actually an atheist game? There's like nine people that are all legion, and three people that are like, What is going on? Um, or you like you just run an atheist game. And then everyone is like, oh my god, is it actually Atheist? Is it actually Legion? Um, which I think is really interesting. And look, we just changed two characters from Trouble Brewing. We have an interesting script. Um, but this is one where those individual characters reshape the entire script on their own. The more things you change, the, the further away from balance it'll get, right? Um, and these ones are all or nothing characters, right? So let's let's come back. Let's come back a step. Uh, we need our virgin back. I don't know the order of the alphabet. Spectacular. Um, okay. So this is back to trouble brewing, right? And let's go back to where we were before. We want to add our let's say four demons. So we've got some good options. I think Fangu is really good here. I think Nodashi is really good here. I think Vortox is too powerful. Um, I really like the Leech. The Leech and the Slayer is a clash, though. Yeah, oh, here we go, you'll see. Um, if there's two characters that do not work, then it will show up with an icon here. This is a, I think they call it a Jinx. And if it has that, you don't want that on your script. You can put it on there, but it means that you can't have a scenario where they're both in the game and the players get that information for free. I think that removes something from the fun of the game. So you want to have zero clashes. So knowing that we want to put a Fangu in there, we want to replace the Skywalker with something else. Um, same goes for the Leech, we want to replace the Slayer with something else, so we'll take them out. Which is fine. So now we've got 
two demons that move and two demons that change information, which I think is cool. That's a, a nice, like if you don't have four demons that do completely different things. Um, in Sex and Violence, we have two misinformation characters, the Viggo Mortis, which I guess is unique and kind of has a little bit of misinformation, maybe. Uh, and then the Fangu, which does jump around. Um, so the first thing that I like to do going from beginner to advanced, something like this, I would turn the spy into the widow. They ostensibly do the same thing, but the widow gets to poison one player. Which I think is more interesting for the spy to do, but they don't register differently, right? So we might get rid of some of our register differently stuff. Um, so we get rid of that. Um, pretty much every advanced script ever is going to have the drunk on it. Calling it out now. I'll get rid of that. And let's put something else in here, all right? So we could do stuff with nominations and executions. We could do stuff with. Actually, that wouldn't be terrible if we do stuff with nominations and executions. So we take the witch, right? And then because we have the witch, we might go and add the f town criers. I'm thinking, well, I'll go with actually town crier for a while. The town crier, right? Um, so you learn if minions nominate, but each player in nominating has a risk of dying to the witch's ability. Um, and then the virgin exists, and the virgin wants to be nominated. Uh, no, 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 no. I need a fourth minion. I don't want alignment change, man. Uh, probably don't want character change, it's probably a bit too much. I don't really want anything that's outsidery. Um, the goblin could be great. That's another nominations and execution character. So now we have two nomination characters and two misinformation characters. Right? The balance that I'm talking about and trying to build something is not that, but this is building a script on a theme. Um, and each of these characters aren't wildly more powerful than the others. Right? Before, when we had just adding Legion, just adding Atheist, those two characters on their own create a whole different setup when they're in play. Um, this does not have that. This doesn't get all but wait as a legion. Um, this is all but wait. Where was the poisoning? All but did the demon move to this place? Um, the other thing is that because of the setup, we have the leech and the dash that give a lot of poisoning. The poison and the widow. I would get rid of the drunk. Um, there's already potentially a lot of misinformation coming into the game, so we would make town more powerful information wise. To deal with that, and I think Dreamer is perfect here. My main complaint about the Dreamer in Sex and Violence is that the Dreamer either is useless, it's a Voltox game, you get no good information, or the Dreamer is God and it is not poisoned and it wins the game on its own, and there's no real middle ground. Um, whereas something like this, if the Widow poisons the Dreamer, then you as a storyteller get to choose how useless they are. The poison eats them one night, they get one night of bad info, right? Um, but otherwise, it might be random as to whether or not they get good or bad information. Which I think is good. The Poisoner and the Dreamer, I think, work nicely together. Uh, I think we can get rid of the Monk. The monk and the Leech, a bit awkward. Um, I want to put in the Dreamer. I think the Dreamer is perfect here. I think the Empath is great here. Um, investigator showing Goblin would be hilarious. We don't. Oh, actually, let's do Outsiders before we do all the Townsfolk. Um... Acrobat in a leech game seems nuts. Seems actually crazy. I don't really like the clutz. I think the clutz just replaces the same. Politician is great. And. I mean. Actually, we're going to put the butler back in and we're going to play Flower Girl. Washable. We're going to play the flower girl. So with the flower girl, if somebody doesn't vote and the flower girl is using that to try and determine whether or not they're evil, they can be like, oh, but I'm the butler, I must, I could vote, whatever. Uh, it gives a, a plausible deniability kind of a thing. Um, Mayor is not an info character. Raven Keep is not an info character. Soldier is not an info character. I think Librarian is actually good here. Librarian detecting a politician is hilarious. 
Um, librarian confirming a class. Class dies. Goes, well, I have to kill librarian. The librarian's like, I was the widow all along. Is is pretty great. Um, what else? Um, we want info. We want info. Engineer would actually be insane. It'd be insanely overpowered. There's no way. There's no way I'm putting the engineer in. Like imagine you turn into dash into a fangu. That seems crazy. Um I think Night Watchman is just a better washwoman. I think that's fine, right? Um Savant is fantastic. Well, we get one more. Um, I kind of like Oracle here. So this is our random script. I didn't, you know, plan any of this in advance. I didn't know what I was going to put in here. And we're going to have a look at how broken or busted this is. So we've got some starting info. We've got the chef, the investigator, the librarian. Um, instead of the washwoman, we have the night watchman. Um, we have some good each night info. We have the empath, the fortune teller, the dreamer, the flower girl, the oracle. All right. Um, the Undertaker, and the Flower Girl, and the Butler, and the Goblin, and the Witch all go to this nominating and voting motif. Um, simply, sorry, the Town Crier as well, and Virgin. So we have this huge, this huge emphasis on nominations and executions. There's no character switching, with the exception of the Fangu. There's no um, alignment changing, with the exception of the Fangu. Fangu in, in itself is uniquely different. Um, politician and Fangu seems like a really wacky combination. Um, you like convince the Fangu to jump to you and then pile throp the game as the, the new dead are become. Are they become if they change their life? So, yeah, okay, the Fangu kind of is the exception to all of the things that the script doesn't have, but it's like a, a less powerful version of all of those things. Um, there's lots of powerful information in characters for good, and there's a, a, like a decent amount of misinformation coming out of the evil team. Um, and then like, okay, how do we rack up something like this, where we would take a mix of some night things, you know, like the starting info characters, like the Night Watchman, and then we put in a lot of each night stuff, so maybe 50-50. And then we pick our outsiders based on how powerful we think the evil team is versus the heavy amount of information. Um, so like if the good team isn't super strong, then maybe we go butler or acrobat. If the evil team seems not so strong, then we can maybe class politician. Um, if I have a dreamer, I would play poisoner and not widow. Right, um, I think Widow is really good. Um, I think Widow is really good for stuff like the Savant, uh, stuff like the Fortune Teller. Widow also sees who the Nadashi poisons uh, and who the Leech Host is, which I think is really powerful as well. Whereas normally the minions don't know these things. So in a small player game, Widow Leech would be really good for the evil team. That's really strong. Um, in a bigger player game, I probably have that combo, I would be more likely to just have Poisoner, Poisoner Witch Goblin. Um, yeah, so this, you know, this is looking at something like that, right? Um, and that's just me taking out a few characters and then taking in a few other characters based on a motif and then going, how powerful is the good stuff? How powerful is the evil stuff? What can I add or change for that? And then you can do the same for something like Sex and Violence, right? You go, okay. Uh, you want to add all these things, and then you go, okay, I want to change this so there's no character switching or something. I want to change this so there's no misinformation. But let's go, okay, let's change it so there's no character switching. Wait, you go, I played this script, and it was hard enough trying to figure out if the Vortox is giving me bad information or not. What I want to change is the character changing in it. So, like, that's fine. We get rid of the philosopher, we get rid of the snake charmer. 
get rid of the barber and we get rid of the hag and the fangu. Okay, okay. We need a new demon. Alright, our new demon could be the Puka. If we want to double down on misinformation, then every single demon gives some sort of misinformation. Okay. That means we want no misinformation minions, I guess. That would be kind of brutal. I think the spine would pop off here. Um, or the Baron, maybe? Baron, actually? I, I rate. I rate the Baron here. Um, then we go. Lunatic would be hilarious. Uh, Reckless probably not. Politician probably too powerful. Give me minions bluffs. Okay, I think this is much better. Um, then we go. Okay, we need our townsfolk. So we can play. Uh, Grab an info character. We don't want it. We don't want extra deaths. Um, actually, protector would pop off here. Let's say mayor or monk, possibly. Um, or preacher. I think just one protector would be fine. And then like slay would be hilarious. Slay would just like never hit. <laughs> just like never ever hit. So you'd have to fire up like so early and then like still maybe you're on a dashy poison because what if you can just never shoot someone that's next to you. Or if you're neighbor dead player, you can never shoot anyone. You you probably just fire off day one and then trust that person with your life. And so this is now sex and violence, but no one's character changes during the game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like it. And so that and so now what we've done is we've removed all of one theme. And then we've tried to pick stuff that is of equal power of stuff that exists in here, right? Um, I think the Dreamer would be fine. It's gonna, you know, I, I actually think Puka and Dreamer would be great. And Dreamer's like, yeah, I nailed this first person, I nailed this second person, third person was kind of wrong, I'm dead. Okay, it's a Puka, alright? Um, the evil team gets like a lot in, in this snitch. Um, I think. Baron getting bluffs at the start is kind of funny. Evil Twin getting not in play characters at the start is kind of not great. Um, but the Serenovus getting not in play characters at the start is like stuff that you know. You could intentionally double bluff someone and then come out the next day. Well, I was Sereno. That's because I'm the real one. You know, you're slightly more believed. Um, Serenovusing someone to be the mayor the entire game would be kind of funny. Um, but it's like looking at this, this doesn't seem broken. Like, I didn't just like there's some characters that you throw on a script, and its power level or its complexity is so high that it's going to be difficult to match to set up a rack up without this character feeling like it's out of place or it's warping the entire game. And the Atheist, Legion, Heretic, there's definitely ones that do that. Um, Riot, Riot turns the script into a Riot script. Um, um, Vortox can do that if you're not careful with how your information works in the game, and especially because Vortox says you have to be executing people. Um, Leviathan changes the whole game into a Leviathan game. Um, and so you have to you have to look at how powerful the characters are that you're putting onto a script, and then you have to assess like does this you know these things even. Would I feel like I was as powerful if I was the dreamer as if I was the fortune teller? It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, would I feel I was as powerful if I was a slayer versus um, something else? I, that's really good. I don't know. I don't think there's anything else that just like straight up rolls on the demon that hard as the snake charmer. Yeah, actually, I you know I'd say that's kind of even. Um, and then so those substitutions aren't horrible. They're not. You know, ridiculous. Um, and so that's the kind of stuff you have to be thinking of. So it's like, step one, how wide and complex are the themes in my script? Do I have character changing? Do I have alignment changing? Do I have misinformation? Do I have extra deaths? All this kind of stuff. Right? How many of these things do I have? Madness and all that kind of stuff. 
too many is probably too much. For a, a script, you want to pick a theme that's like maybe two, three, max. Um, and it's like one major one and two minor ones. So you're like for this one, the major one is going to be misinformation. Um, and then the second one, or well, before, before we had um, nominations and executions was the primary focus, right? Um, and then have like two minor things that are like recurring themes in it. And then once you kind of have the core of your script, you go, okay, how would I rack this up? Is this a character I could actually rack up into a game and, and it not feel like it's radically out of place? Like it, putting the heretic on any rack up, you're like, Jesus Christ. The entire the that entire game is going to be centered around what the heretic says and does, um, and that's that's going to be really hard in itself, you know. And the same goes for Legion. If Legion exists on a script, regardless of whether it's in play, everyone has to have a conversation about what Legion is doing. Who could be a Legion? Is this just a Legion? All the information we have is crap. It must be a Legion game. Same thing for atheists. And then you have to build a script that it is around that. And if your script is is this an atheist or not atheist game? That's your script. If you are doing something else entirely, you know, and then you just randomly put the atheist on there, then your script is not that major theme anymore. Your script is an atheist script. I think that's something that you have to think about when you're building. Um, but also, what your players are enjoying. If your players are choosing S and V over BMR, then maybe you could take stuff like the chambermaid. Or you could take some of the minor characters from BMR. And sneak them into an, an SNV like script, or we take the best parts of SNV and add new experimental characters, or see how TB characters fit into SNV, and try and build something that way. But that's what we've got so far, and I hope this helps you guys think about stuff a little bit. Uh, and let me know in the comments.